I was born deafblind, so growing up, I've experienced many access barriers. Organizations that say, sorry, we can't help people with disabilities. It's really important to know that we have options. We have civil rights. It's important to build up advocacy skills. That's why I decided to become a disability rights lawyer and help make a world more inclusive. There's this idea that blind and deafblind individuals live in darkness and their lives are full of fear. That's absolute nonsense. There are alternative ways to access information and knowledge gained through touch is equal to knowledge gained through sight, sound, or other means. I've gone surfing several times in San Diego it's a lot of fun to feel the power of the waves and to challenge yourself to balance on a surfboard on a powerful ocean. When I started at Harvard Law School, we didn't have other deafblind former graduates who we could turn to and say, how did you do contracts class? How did you do your internships? So we used interpreters who used voice transliteration, we used assistive listening devices, we used braille displays and keyboards. <laughs> I brainstormed all the different types of communication systems I could use, from sign language to print on palm, and I discovered that keyboard and braille display would be the most inclusive. I always carry it in my purse. If I don't have it out at the moment, someone can touch my arm and I can get it out and we can have a conversation. Maxine, can you sit up for a portrait? I had a guide dog, Maxine, to guide me around the campus. Maxine did not like the Boston winters. So there were some times when it was better for me to use a cane than to torture her and take her through the snow. Disability never holds anyone back. Disability is not something that people need to overcome. The barriers that exist are created by society. And it's up to every single one of us to work together to remove those barriers. Technology creates opportunities for people with disabilities to have greater access. A lot of people are building services without thinking about inclusion for people with disabilities. We don't want separate services. We want one mainstream service that everyone can use. During my last year at Harvard Law School, President Obama recognized me as a White House champion of change. And then two years later, I introduced President Obama at the 21st anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. That was a huge honor. He had a wonderful sense of humor and he let me tease him about his typing. A lot of people think it would be very, very difficult for a deafblind person to learn to surf. But I did it. I learned. And that's because a school chose to be inclusive. I found a surfing school in San Diego that welcomed me and taught me how to surf. A lot of our schools in America are not inclusive. It's going to take a lot of work to change that. Law is constantly evolving. New cases come up regarding disability. And I read up, stay informed, I travel around the world, I meet new people all the time. I learn about different kinds of access barriers. The experiences of people in Beijing with disabilities are different than the experiences of people in Houston with disabilities. Every opportunity is a learning opportunity, so I continue to learn and grow.